Hey everyone, I'm Shaylin here with Readsy. Today let's talk about four different ways that you can structure your novel. So all of these structures are relatively easy to understand and to implement, but they also have quite a lot of steps. So I'm gonna go over them somewhat quickly. We have a more in-depth video on the hero's journey, which is the first one that I'm going to be talking about. And we're also going to very soon have a video more in-depth on the save the cat or the 15 beat structure. So first of all, what is the benefit of using a plot structure? Plot structures are basically just ways that you can help structure your novel based on a pre-existing template. Now, one big concern is that they make writing formulaic, and I don't think that that's necessarily true. Most stories, books, or movies kind of end up falling into this same arc, even if they're quite unconventional. The thing about these structures is that they're vague enough that they give you a lot of room to kind of do what you want, but specific enough to basically just help you with your pacing. If you don't like using them, that's totally fine. If you do like using them, it won't necessarily make your work formulaic, but I think studying the structures and knowing the beats can be really useful. It kind of strengthens your intuition for what story structure is. So the first one is the hero's journey. Let's look at this pretty quickly. I'm not gonna break down the individual steps of the hero's journey because we have an entire video on that, but basically the hero's journey, also known as Joseph Campbell's monomous story. You see this structure a lot in very large scale plots, oftentimes speculative fiction, fantasy novels, sci-fi novels. Star Wars is kind of the perfect example of the hero's journey. It follows it very closely. And basically what the hero's journey chronicles is an ordinary person's journey to becoming a hero. So they leave their ordinary world. They're often a little confused at the start about what's going on. They will meet a mentor along the way. They will face a lot of trials along the way. Then they will have kind of a moment of resurrection. This is often where they kind of ascend to a higher power or something along those lines. And then they will come back with basically the key to solving everything and be able to return to their ordinary world. If you think you are writing kind of a classic hero narrative where you have a character who starts as kind of, you know, a farm boy or something similar like that and ends up drawn into a quest, it can be a really good one to consider. It's a very tried and true story structure that works especially well for that type of narrative. Number two is the save the cat or 15 beat structure. So 15 beat is one that we're gonna be breaking down further in a future video. It is a film structure, so it was designed for film by Blake Snyder, but it applies very well to novel. Personally, it's my favorite one to use, probably just because it's what I was taught in school, so it's the one I became very familiar with, but I think it's very useful. So what 15 Beat is, is basically just an expansion of regular three-act structure. So Act 1 is made up of five beats. The opening image, which is just our first glimpse into the story, the setup, which probably elapses over a few scenes, um, which is basically just introducing us to the character's world and showing us kind of the status quo. Somewhere within that beat, there is a shorter beat known as the theme stated beat. So kind of if this is your setup beat, somewhere in there, there's like one point that's the theme stated. This is just a very subtle, um, statement of the theme and usually it comes in the form of a character saying to the main character exactly what that character needs but the main character doesn't know that's what they need yet. And then there's the catalyst beat, which is the inciting incident, and then there's the debate, which is the point where the main character is going to decide whether they're going to embark on this journey or not. The second act has seven beats. So the first one is break into two, which is where the main character, after the debate, decides that they are going to embark on this journey. Then we have the B story, which basically in comes from film term, where you would have the A story, the B story, the C story, etc. This is often how TV shows are broken down, B story is basically a subplot. At the beginning of Act 2, we're usually introduced to another character who is going to function as a subplot. Oftentimes this is a love interest or the introduction of just another character who's going to have an important relationship with the main character. After that is the longest beat in the story, and that's the promise of the premise. It's also sometimes known as fun and games. Fun and games is where we see the premise play out. Basically, it's when you read the back jacket, what you kind of think the main conflict of the story is gonna be, that plays out in the promise of the premise. After that is the midpoint. So the midpoint is something you see in a lot of story structures. It's basically a turning point. So the midpoint often is either a moment of false hope or false defeat. So if it's false hope, the character will think they've achieved their goal, but then realize they haven't actually achieved their goal at all, and the story will continue. Or they will think they failed completely and there's no more hope, and then they'll find new hope and realize there's still a chance and the story will keep going. 
After the midpoint is a beat called Bad Guys Close In. Basically, this just means that the forces of antagonism are growing stronger. This is where you want to raise the stakes. With the forces of antagonism growing stronger, that leads us to our next beat, which is called All Is Lost. Similarly to the midpoint, which can be a moment of false defeat, all is lost is that but more. This is where the character loses hope. Um, it's sometimes known in fiction as the breaking point. Basically, your character thinks there's no point going on. After this, we end up with a beat called Dark Knight of the Soul. Dark Knight of the Soul follows All is Lost and is basically the character's recovery from that. So they think everything is lost, but then they have to regroup, find themselves, and maybe connect with the people that are helping them, make a new plan, figure out what they're gonna do, find some inner strength, that leads us to break into three. Similarly to break into two, it happens with the main character making a decisive action. So when you're thinking of this beat, really think, what choice is my character making here? Then after that, we have the climax of the book, which here is known as the finale. This is basically just the ultimate showdown, and it's basically where your character is either going to achieve or fail at achieving their goal. And then finally, there's final image. So this is designed for film, where there's a literal final image, but in fiction, it's kind of the same. You kind of just think about your last scene and final paragraph and even final sentence and the last kind of note of the story you want to leave the reader with. So the next way of plotting your book is through something known as the plot embryo. So this was created by Dan Harmon and it's kind of a different way of looking at the hero's journey. And for a lot of people, it achieves a similar result as the hero's journey, but just makes more sense. Plot embryo is basically a circle. The character starts at the top and they're in their familiar world. Then they move into the unfamiliar world, but they still haven't been transformed. Then, at kind of the 180 degree point, they're transformed, and then they continue moving through the unfamiliar world, and then eventually back into the familiar world, now having been transformed. So it's kind of like a wheel, like your character is moving around a clock, and there are eight different stages. So the first one is comfort zone. This is what we've seen in other structures as kind of like the setup. Um, we see the character in their regular world and understand what's comfortable and familiar to them. Then we move into the second stage, which is still in the familiar world, and this is wants something. We start to understand that there's something that the character wants or needs and that the character needs to change. So wants something is basically where um, a need is established for the character. So something happens in their world that requires fixing. Say your main character is kind of the standard character we would see in a hero's journey, a boy on a farm. And a lot of the time the need that's established is something like the crops are all dying or one of his family members is sick, and that's the need that's established. In the next wheel of the plot embryo, we move into the unfamiliar world. So the character then um, kind of crosses a threshold and moves into an unfamiliar situation. Number four is adaptation. So the character is um, in this unfamiliar world and they have to adapt as they face more and more trials. So again, we can see some mirrors to the hero's journey, where in the hero's journey as the character crosses the threshold, they start to face trials and gain new skills as they're faced with these obstacles. At the end of adaptation, the character is going to have their revelation. So basically they move from being in the unfamiliar before their transformation to being in the unfamiliar but now transform. And because of that, it leads to the next point, which is get what they want. So after they get what they want, that leads into the next beat, which is pay a heavy price. Because the story isn't quite over yet, we still need a lot of conflict and obstacle. So the character has gone what they want, but it's going to come with some unforeseen consequences. That's the last stage that takes place in the unfamiliar world. After this, we move back into the familiar world. There are two more stages here. So the first one is return to the familiar. This is kind of the active portion of them coming back to their known world. And then finally, we have the last stage, which is having changed. This is kind of um, the denouement where the character is now back in their familiar world, but they've been changed and they have the means to solve the problem that they initially set out to solve. So now we're gonna move into our last structure and this one is the longest and it's 27 chapters. So 27 chapter is also a way of breaking down three act structure and it's kind of created for novels. The nice thing about this structure is that instead of having to think about beats and try to figure out where they're placed in your story, this paces it out for you very easily. It's one beat for one chapter. Now there are 27 beats, so I'm not going to go through all of them super in depth, but a lot of them are relatively self-explanatory. So with 27 chapters, you have three acts, and each act is divided into three blocks. 
each of the blocks contains a three chapter arc. So the first one will be setup, then conflict, then resolution. We're gonna do that over and over again. So the first block has intro, inciting incident, and then immediate action. The first block is focused on introducing the character in their ordinary world. The second block is where we see the main character's life disrupted. So here we're gonna see three chapters that are reaction, action, and consequence. So these are all happening in reaction to the inciting incident that we had in the first block. The third block, which is the last block in act one, is where we see the protagonist's life change course. Chapter seven, we see is pressure, which is where the character is basically in a situation where they're under pressure. And then chapter eight is called pinch. Now pinch in the 27 chapter outline means a plot twist. So this is where we see our first turning point, which leads into the next chapter, which is called push, which is basically the main character being pushed into a new world on account of that turning point. Now we're into act two, which is focused around conflict. In our first block, the main character is going to explore their new world. So chapter 10 is going to be new world, followed by chapter 11, fun and games, which is basically the same as we saw in Save the Cat, followed by chapter 12, which is going to be contrast to old world. Basically, this is just a moment for the character to compare their new circumstances to their prior circumstances. Block 5 introduces a crisis in the new world. Chapter 13 is build up to the midpoint, and then chapter 14 is the midpoint itself. Like we talked about before, midpoint is often a turning point, leading us to the next chapter, reversal, which is going to be reaction to that turning point. Now we're into the last block of the second act, where the main character is going to start finding a solution. The first chapter here is called Reaction, where the main character is still reflecting from the turning point of the midpoint, and they're probably going to have a realization about what they need to do. In chapter seven, they act upon that plan, and then in chapter 18, which is known as Dedication, the main character decides to move forward even despite setback. This leads into act three, which is going to lead us towards resolution. So in the first block of this act, victory is going to seem impossible for the main character. Chapter 19 is known as Trials, where the main character is going to be faced with an obstacle more intense or difficult than any they've faced before. This then leads into Pinch, which is going to be another plot twist or turning point. And then Darkest Moment. We've seen Darkest Moment in a lot of the structures so far. We saw it in the Hero's Journey and also in the Save the Cat structure, where it was known as All is Lost. This is going to be where the main character basically loses all hope and they're at their lowest point as a character. Block eight focuses on recovery from that. So in chapter 22, which is known as Power Within, the main character is going to find a new will within them despite whatever is going on around them. So the main character is going to find power to continue despite their circumstances. This is often a call back to chapter 18 and they remember their desire to succeed. Chapter 23 is known as Action, where your main character makes another decisive action leading into the next chapter, which is known as Converge, where plot lines will start to come together as a result of that character's action. Now we're into the last block, which is basically the finale. Chapter 25 is the battle. It's going to be kind of the final confrontation or final really important trial that the main character is going to face. Sometimes it's a literal battle, sometimes it's used more figuratively. Then after that is going to be the climax of the book. This is going to be the main character's last chance to make a decisive action in order to resolve the conflict. And then finally there's chapter 27, resolution, the final reaction to what has just happened. So that is 27 chapter as well as three other structures that we looked at. Stick around for a more detailed breakdown of the 15 beat structure and remember to subscribe for new writing, editing, and publishing videos every Tuesday and Friday. Until next time.